Hi, I'm Joe. Welcome back to ADOS Calibrations featuring our DOS 3000 and our Hunter ADOS Link. We've talked in the previous videos about some of the requirements for space that we've needed. We've also talked about some of the precautions when it comes to calibrations. We've even done a calibration on a Nissan in our most recent video. Today we're also going to show another calibration using our Ford Edge right here. This is a 2020. We're going to use our ADOS equipment again. This time what we have to deal with is the windshield was replaced. Now that does sound odd that now all of a sudden we have to calibrate it because the windshield was, is replaced. But remember, a lot of these systems today have different things going on. And Ford being no different than some of the others as we have a camera right inside the kind of mounted right underneath that rear view mirror attached to our windshield. And Ford does tell you any time that this windshield has been removed or replaced that we need to go ahead and calibrate and it's called an IPMA monitor or camera. It's also an image processing module A. That's what it stands for. But we also call it a windshield camera. Again, this calibration is going to be a little different than the others we've seen, but it's a good idea to see what this one entails for you to be able to handle it out in the field if you see it. Keep in mind, there are some TSBs out there from other various manufacturers to make sure that you're using a quality replacement windshield and in some cases an OEM to make sure that there's no distortion that could alter or change the image. You'll also see some other important things that you'll need to consider. Is the right height where it needs to be? Has the vehicle been lowered or raised? Is the cargo empty so that we're not having any lean like that. Again, we don't want to affect the calibration by having any of these things occur. So those are still things we need to take into consideration when we're calibrating these type of camera systems. So we have verified that our ride height is where it needs to be and our tire pressure is set to factory specifications, which means that we're able to go ahead and do this calibration to get that customer back on the road. Let's see how this is done. So we've got our VCI hooked up to our DLC. We are connected, as it says right here on the ADOS link. We're going to go ahead and go into Diagnostics, and we're going to select Auto, Auto ID and let the ADOS link pull the VIN for us and identify the vehicle. All right, we're at our main screen for our ADOS link where we have a bunch of different options here. Read DTCs, tests, and things of that sort. And we also have here down at the bottom ADOS calibration. I do want to make sure that there are no DTCs related with this camera being disconnected and remounted to this new windshield. So I'm going to select all and do a, a scan to make sure that there are no DTCs related to this ADOS system that could interfere or cause us problems with calibrating this camera. So we're going to go ahead and let this do its scan, take a few moments, and we'll make sure that everything looks all right. You'll also know that it says I successfully uploaded a report, which means it is saving a report for me that I can use for my pre-scan to attach to the customer's RO to give to them at the end of this to show that what we did prior and what we have done after, which would be our post-scan. All right, let's go ahead and take a look through some of these DTCs. Nothing, nothing. We're looking at all the modules to see if there's anything that would have caused any concerns that we need to be aware of that may need repaired prior to calibrating. And we have no DTCs. And specifically what I was looking at was that image processing module A, the IPMA or the camera itself directly attached to that windshield right in the center there. So there is no DTCs means Everything looks like it's connected correctly. There is no current problems, but we still need to go ahead and calibrate our camera because this windshield was replaced. And again, it doesn't say IPMA, but it is the front facing camera that we are going to calibrate now. So I'm going to select that one and we're gonna see what the ADOS link tells us to do. So I'm gonna select that. Front camera calibration. Remember, it says right here, carry out this procedure if the rear view mirror removed or replaced, windshield removed or replaced, or if you are directed by a TSB or something else that was related to any service that may require this to be calibrated. 
front camera calibration at this point, make sure the following conditions are met. Battery voltage between 12 and 15. Uh, self test is not executed during procedure. Um, PMI was performed if it was replaced, which we did not replace the module. Re they went ahead and reused the original camera, which is absolutely fine. Again, it just needs to be recalibrated once it's been moved on there. Do you wish to continue? Yes, we do. And also look at this one. It says this procedure will require the vehicle to be driven for approximately 10 minutes to align the camera. That's an important thing to remember right there. So this tells me right now that if we kind of go back to what we had talked about, and I believe video one, there is a difference between dynamic and static calibrations. This one appears it's going to be a dynamic calibration, which means the vehicle needs to be driven for it to be calibrated. The last one we did was a static calibration. This will be a dynamic one, so we'll get to see how this ADOS link walks us through this step of the calibration. And do you wish to continue? Yes, I do. Start engine or crank for five seconds if engine does not start. You can see now the vehicle is in alignment mode. We do not want to turn the key off. If it's turned off prior to completing, exit to the menu and redo the actual calibration and restart the procedure. So what we're gonna do now is drive the vehicle on a road with visible lane markers. Drive in a steady manner, over 40 miles per hour, avoiding lane crossing, excessive steering angle changes, or sudden changes in vehicle speed. Pushing continue at this point will allow us to begin the test. We'll go ahead and take this into the vehicle, get all set up before we press continue. All right. So you'll notice right now, before we get on the road and press continue, we do have a front camera malfunction service required indicator lamp currently on the dash. That's absolutely normal right now. The system is in calibration mode. So there is nothing wrong with it right now. We do need to calibrate it and that message will disappear. All right, let's go ahead and press continue and begin our calibration process. You can currently see as we drive, the calibration percentage will change as it sees more of the requirements that the camera needs to see. It's looking for visible lane markings. It's looking for signs, traffic. All of those things will help this camera calibrate. And the more it sees, the faster it will calibrate. We have successfully completed the calibration and without even looking at the screen right now, because I am driving, I was able to see that the camera malfunction indicator on the dash did go away, indicating that was through calibrating. We're going to go ahead and pull over and take a look at what our next step in our calibration entails. So our front camera calibration, it says right now, if you are equipped with lane departure warning system, which looking at the dash we are on this one, we're gonna head confirm the alignment completion. We're gonna turn on the lane detection monitoring system. It is turned on. So we're gonna monitor our lane departure warning system right here, monitor the lane lines displayed on the instrument cluster while driving. The lane lines displayed will change from gray to green when alignment is complete. We're going to go ahead and confirm that our lane departure warning system is okay. So camera calibration was successfully completed. Still says if equipped with lane departure warning system may be required to drive for some more distance in order to activate the calibrated lane detection warning system. So what we're going to go ahead and do is continue on with that activated indication in the dashboard. So that's what we're gonna do now to make sure that everything is, is all right with that. We've just verified our lane departure warning system is operating as designed. It is successfully green when we are within the marked set of lines on the road, and it is turning gray when we veer a little bit, indicating that the camera system is operating as designed we have a successful calibration and I can safely return this back to the customer and get them back on the road. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.